All right. Good Friday morning. Today is Friday, March 25th, 2022. This is your Friday safety meeting. My name is Dennis Davis. I work in the safety department. I've got my, my good friend and colleague, Dave White, with us this morning. Good morning, Dave. Good morning, Dennis. You doing good? I'm doing great. I'm always feeling good on Friday. I've had my coffee. I'm ready to go. Especially weather's changing out there. I, I sense a little bit warm coming in here. You know, Southwest Missouri, man. You we know, need it. Uh, we haven't seen the sun in a couple of days no. this morning. The sun's poking its head out of the cloud. So I think we're going to have some decent weather this weekend. I think so. All right. So we do this Friday safety meeting every Friday morning. Uh, we are live here in Springfield, Missouri right now. We are also live on Facebook and YouTube. So please like us and subscribe. You know, if you're driving down the road and you need to watch us a little bit later, feel free to log on and comment a little bit later. We will take questions live, and we got Amy and Mitch over here to help us with that. We are also simulcasting live in Piston, Pennsylvania, and Salt Lake City, Utah. So let's go east first and see uh, if we got our buddy Rick with us this morning. Good morning. Good morning. How y'all doing down there? Doing, feeling lucky, Rick. Feeling lucky. How are you today? Hey, you know we're all lucky to uh, be blessed to come to work every day here and, uh, and, and interact with all these wonderful drivers that we got. Uh, yeah, it's it's a blessing. Well, good deal, Jan. I see you got your uh, your crew with you. You got you got Bill and Lisa this morning, two longtime Prime Associates, helping you out. Yeah, they're two uh, two wonderful people. They uh, they bring a lot to the table. They sure they, they certainly do. All right, so so give us a, a quick update on what's going on in Pittston, Pennsylvania. You know, it's it's been pretty quiet this week, and uh, not just here, but all around us. As far as as accidents are concerned, we've been doing a great job there. And uh, uh, the pad is, is uh, working out really well this week. Uh, a lot of drivers through as, as far as upgrades. Uh, so it's, it's been a good week here. That's awesome. That's awesome. So um, who's, your, who's your team for the final four? Is your bracket still intact or are you out? Uh, I'm, I'm not a basketball fan. Sorry. <laughs> Come on, Rick. <laughs> That's that's his way of saying his bracket's busted. He's out. It is. Yeah, he's already wasted his ten bucks or whatever. <laughs> it's all right. Hey, if you guys have I, any I questions, say, I will say that my grandson's team is still in, which is Duke. So good for him. Oh, um, yeah. It's Coach K's last season right here, baby. Yeah. Is either gonna do it or not? So. I don't think so. Yeah. But hey, if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, don't hesitate to jump on. We appreciate, guys. Thank you. All right. So always live and present. Salt Lake City. I don't think we've got our buddy Troy with us this morning. I think we got the man, the myth, the legend, Brian Singleton and Aaron Ward. Good morning. We got a good crowd, Dennis. Just like usual, we're uh, 70 degrees here today, so we're uh, we're we're bypassing winter. We're into spring, I think, and hope and pray. So we're doing great here, man. We got a lot going on. I uh, brought my buddy Aaron up today. He's going to talk a little bit about. Um, uh, what's going on up in the safety class? Got another simulator out here and things of that nature. And uh, so, Aaron. Good morning, guys. Um, we do have a second simulator online now, and that has allowed us to expand our uh, class offerings up there. We're offering the safety class six days a week now, and we can also take up to 14 students per class. So that's uh, about double where we were. And uh, everything's going great. Um, our training pad is going well. We've got uh, some new instructors out there as well, and uh, everything's going good. Aaron, tell us a little bit about yourself and, and your uh, with Prime and how long you've been here and, and how you started. I've been with Prime uh, 15 and a half years now. I came from a uh, real estate background before that, where I uh, owned a owned a business, and that was prior to the uh, 2008 real estate crash. So I was looking for something a little more stable and uh, Prime has definitely been that for me. And uh, moved out here to Salt Lake about 12 years ago, right, right around the same time Brian did. And uh, we really like it out here. And this has uh, definitely been a, a good home for us. Uh, you were in the military as well, weren't you, Aaron? I was, I uh, served in the army and uh, I was stationed up in Fairbanks, Alaska. We uh, did a lot of cold weather training up there, of course. and. Uh, we did a lot of training for uh, for an enemy that's kind of raising their head again. So uh, that was a good time up there and uh, really uh, enjoyed that service. So at this time, anyone who did serve in the military, we'd like you to stand up and so you can be recognized. 
All right. Yeah, thanks, Aaron. I really appreciate it. Um, before we sign off, I, I see Glenn's there. I just want to tell uh, from Salt Lake Group, uh, Glenn Horak, congratulations. Uh, you know, uh, one hell of a driver, one hell of a man, and, and we're proud of you out here for, for winning the uh, best driver in the country. So congrats, Glenn. Come on up here, Glenn. Let's get this out of the way, man. Brian introduced you, did a great introduction. So uh, you've been busy the last couple of weeks, haven't you? Yeah. With out in Vegas, spent about five days out there. How'd you do with the old uh, casino route? I actually done pretty good. Done pretty good. Better than the what Dave White would do, obviously. So yeah, probably. The good deal. So what happened? So last week, let's see, you were up here going out for TCA Owner Operator of the Year. There's three of you now. Starting all the way back, how many did they say? How many people actually applied for it? Uh, I read it online yesterday. Twelve thousand people applied. Twelve thousand drivers applied to be owner operator of the year. They narrow it down to three. Yep. Bring you to Vegas, and then what happens? And then they write me a big old check for twenty five grand. <laughs> awesome! Congratulations! Yeah, twenty five thousand dollar check. Yeah, we got our owner operator of the year right here for uh, TCA Truckload Carriers Association. And uh, it was well overdue. I know that. I know you guys been uh, you've been out there before. Yeah, well, that's my fourth trip out there. And uh, there's no doubt. But you got your number one. You and Carla, what you guys do here? How long have you been at Prime? Let's talk about your history. Thirty years. Thirty years here at Prime. Yeah. And before that, you were in the military too. Yeah, I was in the military. I spent six years in Marine Corps. Uh, and I drove for ten years before I came to Prime and been here ever since. So you've been in the trucking industry 40 years approximately? Yep. Wow. So, okay, so 30 years here at Prime, what, what have you done in those 30 years? Made a whole lot of money. <laughs> there you go. Besides that, though, 4 million mile safe driver, right? I got got 4 million at Prime. I got five and a half overall. I've, uh, you know, I've gone through probably 14 or 15 leases. And, uh, you know, I've been on... Been to Moda for driver of the month nine times. Going up there in a couple of weeks, see if we can get Missouri driver of the year. And uh, I've been, you know, we do truck driving championships. Yep. I've won it three times and got grand champion once. And uh, just other than that, just work. And Pride and Polish, you've been in all those too. Yeah, yeah. I won Pride and Polish like nine years in a row. And, and That's I awesome. won it again two years ago. So extracurricular activities you stay busy on, no doubt, in trucking as yeah. well as in personal life, too. So. Yeah, we do reach across America and uh, do some other – go to schools and stuff and talk to kids and ride a lot of motorcycles. And Sam Biggs Memorial yeah, Help. Yeah, Sam Biggs business. Memorial Foundation bike show and poker run for, you know, send money to help out childhood cancer. That's awesome. So, well, congratulations on your uh, winnings. Uh, appreciate you. You're a hell of a driver, dude, and we appreciate you here, Prime, no doubt. You and Carla both. So, Carla, come on up here. Yeah. Come on up here, Carla. You don't want to do you. Gee, you don't have to flip me off. I know I'm number one anyway. That's okay. <laughs> What's that? You always have to put me on the spot. No, no, because you're an important piece here. Talk about you and Glenn. What, you started out here solo, operator? Yeah, I've worked here. It, from I worked, got in, worked here from 92 to 2000 and nine and that's when she came out and she's been out ever since all right what do you think of that some days it's good some days it's not <laughs> <laughs> that's good but no your kids were obviously you raised the kids at home um, come to a point to where you are able to get out of the house yeah he said get your license you're going out with me <laughs> <laughs> so we got, got a little funny stories i remember when i was in safety downstairs here don lacy was our safety director and uh, we got an interesting phone call that there was a trainer working with a trainee, and it was a, a male-female situation, and then someone was yelling at the other one. The other one was yelling back and ended up being you two out there. That's true. And I told him, I said, he didn't like it. I said, yeah, because I'm the only training that you've had that can yell back because I don't care. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Sometimes and she does, still does. <laughs> But you guys do a wonderful job here going coast to coast, Canada. You go everywhere, don't you? Haul. Well, we don't do Canada now. After he had a surgery, he won't get the vaccine. So oh. we're not we're not hauling Canada anymore. But we'll see how that's like it on our cruise in October. 
Uh oh, there's a, there's the eyes looking at him. Okay, no fighting up here. So <laughs> one of the one of the best pictures that I've got is uh, his first truck, and he our school that we lived in in, in San Luis. He was able to pull in the parking lot of, and face back out to be able to leave, and actually standing there on the sidewalk waiting to go across the street till he stopped. That truck was only four digits. We now have six digits. Time just come, yeah. Time just flies through here, and that's what they have to tell you. And what you guys have done, I mean, remarkable. So, love you both. Congratulations. I know there's no doubt it's a team situation out there on the road. It takes both of you to make it. And, yeah, it does. Uh, and uh, but thank you, thank you for what you do, and hopefully you had a good time in Vegas. Um, yeah, it was pretty good. I stayed away from him so he could win. There you go. Sometimes you got to do it. Hey, if you're winning, stay away, you know? Well, if, if, if I'm anywhere around, he starts losing. So I just say, okay, bye, see you. <laughs> go to the room. That's our little advice for a relationship right there, right, Glenn? Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for coming up here, Carla. I appreciate it. Love you. Take yeah. care. Yep. Glenn? Oh, yeah, well, good job, buddy. Appreciate it. <sighs> Four million right there. Hey Dave, well, you know, I, you know, I, don't, I don't know if everybody caught that. You, you see how casually he was just mentioning, you know, you know, I won Pride and Polish nine times in a row. You know, it's just, <laughs> just like oh well. But that's 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 pretty awesome. And Pride and Polish, awesome. that's a lot of work. It is. And it is. Hopefully, everybody will see that come our picnic and uh, Labor Day. We'll have a Pride and Polish out here, and that's what Glenn's done. Glenn's competed nationally too at Pride and Polishes. You you know you spiff up your tractor, polish it, make it look, and compete against other owner operators, company trucks, whatever, and see who wins. And uh, independent judges determine that. It's it's quite a process. It's pretty cool. So yeah, Glenn had to stop competing so other people could win. Right? <laughs> that's what, that's why I wanted him on a truck driving championship team. Yeah, really, no doubt. So that's awesome, Glenn. Congratulations. All right, let's keep it moving. You got a little safety this morning? Yo, we do. Uh, this past week, we had 136 inspections. 99 of those were clean, so a 73% clean rate. Great job, everybody. We went up 6% from last week, so no doubt. One area we wanted to bring up, and just a reminder, um, alcohol on the truck, obviously no drugs, too, as well, but that is no, a big no-no here at Prime. I know we have a lot of new people out there. A lot of new uh, driving associates. And just a reminder, you cannot have alcohol on your truck. Even if you're off duty, even if you're at home, that's a no-no. Um, there's no alcohol that's allowed unless it's part of a bill of lading and it's a manifested load on your trailer, then it's legal to be on your trailer. So you're hauling a load of Anheuser-Busch, you're fine, or Miller, whatever, but nothing inside your cab. So the CEO Dennis is out here in California. He's picking up a load of Walmart. And he goes, hey, I'd like to get Carrie a nice little bottle of wine out here and uh, take it home to her, put it in my in my sleeper or hide it up underneath whatever my uh, bunk. That's a no-no. If the officer sees that, they'll write you for it. And uh, you cannot do that. So you don't want to get caught with drugs or alcohol on your truck. I know, too, and I said drugs because... A lot of these, we have a number of states where it's legal. Recreational marijuana is legal. Illinois, Colorado, just to name a couple. And uh, stay away from that because that's a big no-no in commercial trucking and commercial CDL. You can lose your license over that and you don't want to go down that path. So, you know, that's a good time to remind folks that, you know, per FMCSA regulations, we do do random drug testing, you know. So, um, and it's not a situation where we're going to give you a heads up on on you know this situation um and it and also is a situation where even if you got pulled last month you know you could easily get pulled again next month you know we put every single driver in the pool every single month so you could be selected on multiple months and we've had that two three times in a row same driver gets pulled and uh they think we're picking on them we're not it's just the way the computer generates the numbers so um besides that too Remember this, if you're ever involved in an accident, and it's a major accident, even if it's not your fault, and somebody gets hurt, or there's a fatality involved, that officer can take you to a hospital, and they'll draw blood on you. And they have that right to, and what they're looking for is any controlled substance that's in your body. They're not saying you're guilty, they're just doing what the law requires them to do for their state. So even if it's not your fault, we've had drivers get, the officer says, you have to jump in your car, my car, let's go for a little ride, and we'll go to the hospital. They'll draw blood from you, bring you back to the scene when you're done. And what they're doing is they're looking for any controlled substance that's in your system. 
and that can all uh, influence any type of potential legal ramifications down the road and they also influence your license too as well so um just stay away from all that my just the heads up word of the days don't even get involved you won't have to worry about it so you know hey dave i did the inspections this week and this is going to give us a, a good transition to you know susan and our law department <clears throat> but you know one of some of the things that we noted this week you know we had a, a few seat belt violations you know we've got these big neon seat belts you know and folks you know, when we talk to the driver, they've got it tucked underneath that, that left arm because it, it bothers them or it causes a rash or whatever the case may be. Unfortunately, that is a, a violation. And, and because our seatbelts are easily visible, that gives a, a, an officer an easy way to, to, to look at you and, and get you pulled over. You know, always we try to remind drivers, alleviate the distractions in the cab. We did have a few write-ups this week where... We had some drivers uh, with a handheld device in their hand while driving down the road. Big no-no. And, of course, as I was just turning it off or I was just, you know, unfortunately, you just had it in your hand. So that is a, uh, a violation of the law. And, you know, here's a, a good note. You know, typically we see a handful of uh, log violations when we do the inspections. This week we didn't see a ton. You know, in fact, I, I got almost halfway through them and didn't have any. I think we ended up with three, and one of them got data queued because of the time change. Officer didn't calculate it right. That is correct. So we, we, we're down to two, which is a phenomenal, phenomenal, you know, number based on the amount of inspections we have and based on the amount of drivers we have on the road. So with that being said, I'm going to ask, you know, Susan to come up from our law department and she's going to talk a, a little bit of logs with us this morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm just going to go over a few areas where we are having some issues with logs. Um, Yesterday, we had two drivers put out of service because they didn't make sure they were the active driver. And when they went through the scale, they were logged in the sleeper berth, but behind the wheel on their co-driver's hours. So if you are a team, make sure you always check to make sure that you're the active driver before you get behind the wheel. Another issue that we're having that seems to have really ramped up lately is when you put your truck in the shop, please log out. Um, even if it's here at Prime, make sure you log out before you hand your keys to the mechanic. Um, they will drive on your hours and it is uh, time consuming to try to get that time moved off of you. Um, also, certify your logs daily. This is one thing we're getting right, written up for during a roadside inspection. Um, also, OmniTrax made a change where your logs have to be certified before we can edit them for you. So make sure your logs are certified before you call in for help. If you are having any issues with the Qualcomm, please contact the log department. We troubleshoot. Um, we can uh, conference you in with OmniTrax. We can advise you whether you need paper logs or not. Uh, you also only have eight days to get the unit back in working order. So please reach out to us as soon as you notice any issues. Um, on duty, make sure you're logging on duty every day. Vehicle inspections, fueling, checking in at customers, dropping a trailer, picking up a trailer. And personal conveyance misuse is still one of the biggest issues we face every single day. So if you have any questions about personal conveyance, reach out to us. Um, when you do select it, there's an automatic message that goes to the truck. Read it through and call us if you have any questions. Um, we do have a comprehensive log class Monday through Friday. It's at 1330 Central Time. We do simulcast to Pittston. And uh, last week and this week, we were simulcasting to Salt Lake City, too. So feel free to join one of those classes Monday through Friday. Right. You're not going to get off that easy. Uh -oh. <laughs> First, does anybody have any questions for Susan while we're here? I got one. Yes. All right. So, you know, we get a lot of calls and questions every day. Of course, we shift them over to you guys. But, you know, can you, I know you mentioned it a little bit earlier, but let's 
let's give a little bit more attention to personal conveyance. You know, it's everybody's, you know, when we had Captain Kelly here, we mentioned personal conveyance. He rolled his eyes like, oh, my God, here we go. But, you know, let's talk about a little bit what, about what personal conveyance is, you know, and, and when can you use it? Okay. So personal conveyance is when you are doing nothing at all related to prime business. Um, maybe you are leaving a customer and you're going to go to the first available safe parking to shower, eat, complete the break you started there. Um, if you're at a terminal, you can use personal conveyance to bobtail to do your errands. If you're at home, you can use personal conveyance. You can't use personal conveyance when you run out of hours to keep from getting a violation. You have to stay on the drive line. Just note your logs that that was the first available safe parking. A false record of duty status is worse in the eyes of the DOT than an hours of service violation. So if you do run out of hours, stay on the drive line, find the first available safe place to park, but don't switch to PC. You know, what if my next safe place just so happens to be 80 miles down the road at my final destination? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, in that case, please reach out to the log department. We have a website that we use. Uh, we can find truck stops that aren't necessarily in our network that does have parking. So when you are looking on the Prime app, maybe it doesn't list all truck stops there. So please reach out to us. We usually can locate someplace a lot closer. All right. Anybody else have any questions? Looks like we have one over here. Oh, so hold on. Let's get on the microphone. Subject of personal convenience. I'm coming to Prime, drop off my load. I got two hour, uh, two minutes left on my clock. I drop off my load. And I want to run down to the post office to pick up my uh, mail. Can I go PC with two minutes left on my clock? Get that mail and come back? Yes, you can. It's a vicinity use and you are doing something personal. Good morning. I got a question here. Um, I've had several students get confused about the passenger rule violation. If you can explain that a little bit more for people who doesn't seem to understand. Sure. You know, yeah, I, I try to explain it and maybe I'm not doing a good enough job. So maybe you can do better. Yeah, absolutely. So that's an alert that OmniTrack sends out. Um, it doesn't actually generate a violation internally. Um, there's no log point associated with it. Uh, we haven't had anybody get written up during a roadside inspection for it, but the rule is you can only sit off duty for three hours in a moving commercial vehicle, provided you have a seven hour sleep or birth break before or after that three hours. So only three hours off duty when the truck's in motion, you do have to log a seven birth hour sleep or birth in order for that not to be a passenger rule violation. Hi, Susan. Um, Hi. Just a question on A2 splits. Um, I noticed there must be a rule change or something like that. It used to be, I, I, I check the box where it says, we'll, we'll pair sleeper birth. And not that I'm necessarily relying on it, but I always watch the clock to see if I can do it. And a lot of times the 14 hour clock won't give you any time back on it. So it's really a lot of times useless. You just have to do your 10 hour break and then start driving after that. What What, what is the rule change on that? Okay, so the first break you take only pauses your 14 hour clock. It doesn't give you additional time. So if you take the eight hour sleep or birth break first, you still have to have time on your clock. Um, it just pauses it. You only gain additional time when you complete the second part of the split break. All right. So if anybody else have any questions for, wait, go ahead. Salt Lake has a question. Go ahead. We're having problems with our Omni tracks going offline and it comes back online and then back offline several times while we're driving. Is there something that we can do about that or what? Okay, so is it like when you're using navigation? Yes. Okay. And then all of a sudden so the whole thing will go down. The whole system just goes completely blank on ours. And okay. Then about 20 minutes or so it goes back up all right we are having huge issues with that uh, fleet-wide with navigation 
shutting down while drivers are using it. If you call us, we will send an over the air reset to your unit and that usually restores it. Um, I'm not an expert, but I have a feeling it's due to the transition in the cell phone towers. Um, the navigation uses the Verizon network, I believe. Um, so if you do have that issue, um, call us. We'll check to make sure that your, um, your shutdown timer isn't set to two hours. We'll extend that for you, but um, I have a feeling it's got to do with reception in the area, and we will send a reset if you reach out to us. Okay, because we've had the resets done several times, and it's still not. It still comes in and goes out and comes in and goes out, so. Okay, give me a call. Give call. Um, yeah, and I'll look and make sure that your uh, sleep timer isn't set too low for you, okay? okay. All right. Thank you. Oh. All right, thank you, out in Salt Lake City. So we're going to let Susan get out of here. However, we're going to ask you to stick around for after the meeting in case anybody does have any questions. They can find you over there and ask sure. you some questions. Okay, absolutely. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Most important point, Dennis will buy you breakfast too. So yeah, you got a breakfast? Uh, moving right along. <laughs> no, I'd, I'd buy Susan breakfast anytime. You know, she. Uh, you know, it's, it's 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 a certain you know group of people that we always go to, no matter what the issue is. If we had a log issue, it doesn't matter if it's a uh, you know what fleet manager it is or or what log log uh, auditor it is. You know, I, I typically rely on Susan to, to, to get me the answer, so. No doubt, she's 100% on vast majority of the time. There's no doubt, she's good. So yeah, we're glad we have her. Because it's up to you or me, we'd be struggling on this hours of service stuff. Absolutely, so, no doubt. absolutely. You know, uh, we're, we're gonna transition here a little bit. You know, we're gonna ask uh, 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 Bill and security to come up. Hot button topic, you know, every once in a while we get messages, hey, you should look at this post on, on Facebook or or whatever the case may be. So uh, apparently the flavor of the month is locks on trailers. So uh, you want to come up and, and talk about that a little bit? Well, good morning. Yeah. Good morning. First off, Glenn, congratulations again. I got really three things I want to talk about this morning. I want to talk first about trailers, then about fuel, and I'll finish up with locks. First thing about trailers, in the last year, we have lost six trailers stolen. Okay, it's a big issue right now. And the reason is we just cannot, you know, we've ordered trailers, we can't get them in. Trailers are like the hot commodity. Trailers that were selling last year for $35,000, $40,000 on used trailers are now going for seventy-five dollars to $100,000. The same identical trailers. So guys and gals, we ask you that if you see a trailer sitting out there, just at a truck stop and there's no truck in front of it, please give us a call so we can get it recovered. They're stealing the whole trailer. They're not breaking into them anymore. They just want to steal the whole unit because the trailer itself right now is worth more than what's inside normally. So they can take the trailer, steal it, sell the whole trailer, and they've got something they can run up and down the coast to make a bunch of money with. So please, if you see something, just sitting there, flatbed tanker, reefer, doesn't matter, give us a call, we'll get it recovered. And that's really the most important thing right there. Secondly, with fuel, I'm working several cases right now with agencies around the United States with fuel thefts. As we all know, fuel costs have gone up, right? So what they're doing is they're stealing the fuel out of trucks at this point in time. The other thing they're doing though, and you guys need to be really watching what you're doing is they're putting skimmers on the pumps at truck stops. So when you're getting your fuel, you're swiping it in, they're collecting your card number and they're using those card numbers to go back and steal fuel at another truck stop or another location. So please, if you got it, if you go in and you, the pump doesn't look right, walk inside, head, pay for it inside and come back out and get the fuel there. The other thing is we had a truck a couple of weeks ago, had all the fuel siphoned out of the tanks and out of the reefer unit. We could go and you, know, you can go get buy aftermarket locks for your tanks, but I will tell you right now, they can't get them in. I talked to the company store the other day. There's just none to be had in the United States. Your OEMs that are out there, I think she said they have like one in stock for Freightliners, one in stock for Peterbilt's, and they're like 150 or $200 per lock. That's pretty expensive, right? 
So what I would tell you to do, be, be cautious of where you're parking. Try not to park in the back of a truck stop, park in the front where there's more activity. People tend to gravitate away from where there's activity, they're gonna do a crime. They wanna be in the back where they can get away, nobody can see you. Usually there's not a lot of camera coverage back in the back of parking truck stops either. So park towards the front if you can, and always be mindful of your surroundings. And finally, the last thing is, I know everybody's seen it, the locks on trailers. Prime has always had a policy for the last 10 years since I've been here of locking every trailer, whether it's loaded or unloaded. So if you're hauling freight or if you're hauling air, we have to have a lock on the trailer. And you say, well, it doesn't really make a lot of sense if it's unloaded, well, I have to put a lock on it. But here's the deal, if you go out and get a, a truck wash and you clean out your trailer, get it all washed out, you drive somewhere, you stop, somebody opens up the back of your trailer, throws something in there, what? Nowadays, if you're down around the southern border, somebody jumps in there and you take off down the road, what if you get stopped after you're taking off down the road with people in the back of your tra trailer? Gonna have some explaining to do. So please keep a lock on it at all times. And plus, it's the right thing to do. Prime has agreed and made contracts with our shippers that we will deliver our, our product on time, safely, and securely. It's all part of the promise that we make to our, our customers. And the better we do our job and the better we keep their products safe and secure, the more opportunities we have to increase our freight basket. So please, it's real simple. If you gotta do a walk around, it takes a couple seconds to put a lock on a trailer. When you walk around the back to check your tra trailer out anyway, so please just do it. It's the right thing. Anybody got any questions? Now, what kind of locks do you recommend? So, the only locks that we recommend here are alloy locks. We saw them at the company store and at the outbound lanes have them. The reason is Robert got in with his company probably 20, 25 years ago. Uh, John Albright, who's, who's one of the owners of the company, he made a sales call down there to Robert. Robert loved the lock. The lock is made over in, overseas, shipped over here. They're unique. You just can't take a pair of bolt cutters on them and, and cut them off. You got to have some kind of grinding wheel or something to get them off. They're extremely, extremely durable. They don't freeze up in the winter. You can beat on them with a hammer. They're not going to come, come off the trailers. They cost a little bit more, but by God, they, they're worth every penny that you put into it. So, you know, that's the locks we we recommend. Awesome. Any questions for Bill? We got one over Question here behind. Oh, go, go ahead, ahead Princeton. Hey, just out of curiosity, uh, I know obviously Prime loves the alloy locks. Um, a company I worked for before had an alloy system, but it was called the Enforcer Adjustable Door, and it was a big bracket type of a lock, like a hinge lock that went wrapped around the um, the handles or the poles for the handles on the doors. And then you put your alloy lock through it. Is there any reason why Prime doesn't go to that for something a little more secure? Well, we, we actually tried it out on uh, for a while here and I had a couple drivers driving it around. Uh, really, it just comes down to cost. A lot of drivers don't want to put the extra cost on there. As you know, every driver is responsible for their own lock and paying for their own lock. Now, if you want to use that, uh, and the enforcer is the exact same company as the Abloy, uh, you know, you can go ahead and purchase that and you can ask the company store to bring it in and you can use it. Uh, you know, we have the different uh, system at the back of the doors with the, uh, the dual locking on both doors. That's why we only went to the system. And with that, that one there, you've got to get behind those bars also. And some of the bars are a little tighter than what they need to be. So you got to be very cautious of that also. But no, if you want to use it, you're more than welcome to use it. All right. One more. Go ahead, Keith. Yeah, it's always good to put a lock on your trailer because I know that if the freight gets tampered with while you're in possession of that and you don't have a lock on it, you're going to be liable for that freight. But I also heard that the, they're going to be putting what service failures assigned to people that aren't using the, the locks. Yeah, beginning April 2nd. And this is the last information I had. They will be issuing service failures if you do not have a lock on your trailer. Now, of course, you will have the right as a driver and your fleet manager will have the right to dispute if you feel you, you did have one. I spoke with a driver this morning who said she had a call about not having a lock on her trailer, but she swears she did. I told her, well, in the future, take a picture when you put your lock on the back of your trailer so you have documented evidence that you have 
a lock on your trailer. And then when you get done with your load, you can just delete the picture and you're good to go. You know, if, if it was me, I would just snap a quick picture that I got the seal, the lock and everything ready to go on each, each load I did, have documented proof. So if somebody wants to pick up the phone and call in, say, hey, you don't have a lock on your trailer, you can say, nope, here's the picture right here, I'm good to go and everything. I know it seems a little redundant that you would have to take a picture, but you know, we get calls every day from other drivers on other drivers about not having locks on their trailers. So unless there's a picture associated with it that we have evidence proof that there's not, we're gonna do what the other driver says that he had one on or didn't have one on. Simple as that. Thank you for answering the question. I appreciate it. That was your question. All right, anything else for Bill? Good job, Bill. Appreciate you coming up. See, we didn't cut you off this week like we did last week, so you're good. Who's our next one, Sam? Sam, start making your way up here. We got Sam Messick. Sam's a unique guy. He works in our accounting department, but he's our guru on the fuel side. And I was talking to Tom Crawford, president of the Missouri Trucking Association. Tom told me you met with a number of our legislators to discuss biodiesel mm -hmm. and how that all and what, where we stand as far as prime goes. So yeah. I said you knocked it out of the ballpark. You did great. So <laughs> no doubt you got kudos from outside agencies oh, man. too. So but, good job. Yeah. They're, that's basically a government agency, right? That, that I mean, they're government lobbyists. That doesn't even count. That's not a compliment for them to tell me I do a good job, right? <laughs> there you go. No, hey, just wanted to emphasize a couple things, and Bill actually kind of teed this up. So on fuel fraud, we definitely have seen an uptick in fuel fraud. We had a couple of operators over the last several weeks that got dinged for thousands of dollars in fuel fraud. And one weekend, we had one operator, or between two operators, had over $10,000 of fuel fraud on two. So there's a couple of things that we're doing about it. Obviously, you know, Bill's working on some of this stuff, but uh, we, the today, the best way to avoid fuel fraud is to pay via the mobile app for your fuel transactions, right? Because if you're paying via the mobile app, you're not having to swipe the card at the pump. It's really a card not present transaction, which is the most secure type of transaction in today's world. So make sure if you're not using mobile pay at Pilots, Loves, TAs, all the different vendors that have that available, I highly encourage you to make sure you, you, you utilize that. It'll help uh, eliminate fraud uh, risk that you have as an operator. Um, the other thing that we're working on, and uh, I shouldn't say we're, Rodney Rader and the IT group are working on is a project uh, called Fuel Proximity. And the nice thing about fuel proximity is that it's something that's, that happens behind the scenes. You wouldn't even notice that it was uh, a new feature that we'll be rolling out here within the next several weeks or months. But fuel proximity will ensure that if you go to do a fuel, fuel transaction, that your unit is where your card is. So someone who has stolen your information, unless they're sitting at the pump with you, couldn't fraudulently charge uh, a transaction to your card. So we're confident that this fuel proximity program comes with a no fuel fraud guarantee. So basically we're going to completely eliminate fuel fraud in the fleet with this fuel proximity feature. It just another hopefully benefit to you as a prime operator that we're adding that layer of fraud protection uh, to you. So that should be coming within the next several weeks or months. Um, one other thing that I wanted to mention this morning was uh, the fuel tax holidays. So I put a message out on the Prime mobile app. Hopefully most of you have seen that. But in Georgia and Maryland, uh, they, as of last week, announced fuel tax holidays due to the excessively high fuel cost uh, across the country. Other, other states are probably going to follow. There's different dates, uh, different date ranges that all these states are using uh, for these fuel tax holidays. But the bottom line is for you as an operator, these fuel tax holidays will save you money. And they'll save you money because in the states that have declared these holidays, you will not be required to pay state fuel tax when, when we do your IFTA reconciliation at the, at the end of the month in any of those states if you ran miles in those states, right? So if you run miles in Georgia, Maryland until the fuel tax holiday has ended, you will not pay fuel tax on those miles that you run in those states. The part that gets confusing about this is a lot of the states also, they're not charging you fuel tax based off of actually running miles in those states, but they're also not requiring you to prepay fuel tax 
at the pump, right? So every time you go and buy fuel, part of the cost of fuel is a prepayment of state fuel tax that the states require. So it's confusing to a lot of operators because they're like, hey, there's a fuel tax holiday in Maryland and Georgia, I'm gonna go fuel there and it's gonna save me a bunch of money. It, it won't as far as just the fueling piece of the transaction. The savings are on the back end based off of where you're running your miles, right? So if you're running miles in Georgia and Maryland, you're gonna save money. If you're buying fuel in Georgia and Maryland, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to save money on fuel taxes. You're just not going to have to prepay the tax at the time of the transaction, right? So if you go into Georgia and Maryland today and you're just buying all your fuel there, but you're running your miles in a bunch of other states, you're going to owe a massive tax bill at the end of the month because you didn't prepay any fuel tax and you ran your miles outside of the states that actually have the fuel tax holiday. So just something to keep in mind, it can be a little bit confusing. If you have any questions, call me, call the fuel desk. We'll be more than happy to uh, walk you through kind of the logic on this. But uh, the bottom line is we'll continue to communicate as more of these states evaluate legislation uh, around fuel tax holidays. But for now, it's only Georgia and Maryland. And one ends, I think, the end of April, and then the other one's through the, uh, through the end of May. So just keep an eye out. Uh, on the mobile app. Everything that we post fuel and wash wise is in the on the mobile app uh, in the travel update section of the mobile app. So make sure you keep an eye on that new section uh, for all things fuel and wash. But Dave, that's all I had unless we got some questions. Any questions for Sam? Yeah, if you guys do have questions, any of our driver associates, uh, make sure you reach out to him. Sam's a smart cookie on this, and uh, he does a great job, and so is our fuel desk as well. So what do you got next there, Big D? I thought Sam was looking at his notes. I thought he'd written them on his hand. I said, I used to try that in school, Dennis, and that just never worked out with the answers. You know what I mean? Uh, no, I don't know oh, what you mean. Oh, you don't know what I mean. Okay. Sorry. But no. Go ahead, man. But uh... – you know, we always talk about reefer. You know, we reefer, 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 and reefer is a, a, a big part of what we do here at Prime. But we got some other divisions too that are that are growing and doing exceptionally well. So I'm gonna ask Jim Wilkins to come on up. He's our our director of, of flatbed, and he's gonna talk to you guys a little bit about what we're doing in our flatbed division. Come on up here, Jim. Jim does a great job. My my, my favorite thing is getting in front of people and talking. <laughs> um, you know, business in flatbed is very good. Um, you know, I've been involved in this business all my adult life, and I've never seen it the way it is right now, whether flatbed reefer tanker. There's just a huge amount of opportunity. Um, we've seen rates increase dramatically. Um, you know, we, a, a byproduct of that is drivers don't have to stay on the road as much, so they can take a little more time off at home or whatever. But the need is there. If you're able to run, our shippers are begging for trucks. You know, last week, Jim Guthrie got up here and he talked about um, checking your bills, looking at your bills to make sure that what we sent you on the Qualcomm matches what is on your bills and that's applicable to every division um we've had instances and, and these are rare we've had instances where we have sent information to a driver we may have sent you know the load goes to sheboygan wisconsin when really it goes to sheboygan michigan so you know if you see something on your bills that doesn't doesn't uh, coincide with what we send you on the Qualcomm, immediately call your, your, your fleet manager, the night guy or whoever, and get some validation of what's really right, because we do make some mistakes. You know, one thing in flatbed that maybe is a little bit different, we have to secure loads, we have to tarp loads, we have to protect the product. When, when, when we're tarping loads, it is important that that shipper sees that that load is being protected. When we're delivering that load, it is important that that receiver sees that you come in with that tarp, with that load tarp, and that we've protected that product. We've had instances where, you know, various things happen. Um, you know, I, I untarp the load at the down the road at the truck stop. 
uh, last night. Well, it rained during the night. So we show up and we got a big problem. So, you know, that's very important. Another thing that's important, if a shipper is starting to load you in the rain, um, you know, we bet that, that should be a red flag. We've had instances where, you know, that has happened. And then when we get to the other end, receiver doesn't want the product. And then we got a dog fight with the shipper, but we shipped it in good shape. It just didn't arrive in good shape. You know, if something like that happens, call your fleet manager. Um, the best tool you have is that tool right between your ears. You know, so pay attention to what's going on. You know, this deal on security, I've been in this business for a long time, and I can remember when it wasn't like this. Unfortunately, it is. It's a real deal. I mean, lock those trailers. Um, don't detach from your trailer and, and run across town because those things happen every day. So, you know, be sec do, the, do the right thing. You know, um, we have an honor today. Uh, Donnie, why don't you bring Gene up? You know, a big accomplishment here at Prime is uh, running uh, safe. Safety is a big deal. Everybody knows that. It's our number one calling. Gene has done some incredible things here. And Donnie, I'll let you talk to him. Right. Thank you. I always forget what I want to say. So I wrote this down so I wouldn't forget today because this is a big occasion for me and Eugene. My name is Don Welcher. I've been here for 29 years. Eugene's been with me for 28 of those in flatbed. Nowhere else, right? You're with me. There's not enough time or words for me to describe how lucky I am to be Eugene's business partner. We have a great business relationship. He's more like a brother to me than an employee. I don't think of Eugene as a number. I don't think of him as a driver. He's more like a brother. And I can't tell you how important it is for me to send a load to this man and I don't worry about it. That's the greatest feeling in the world as a dispatcher to know this man is going to pick up his load. He's going to deliver his load on time and I don't have to worry about it. The customer doesn't have to worry about it. Eugene doesn't refuse loads. He picks them up and delivers every time on time. He obviously doesn't have any accidents. You know, this man makes money. He's a shining star for me. I appreciate everything he does for us and for Prime. We appreciate you, Eugene. You've done a hell of a job. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, I, I want to say just a little bit more. You know, Donnie's right. Um, Eugene is an incredible person. Um, I, and, and I really mean that. I mean, he is an incredible person. Um, Eugene, I, I asked him one time, I said, Eugene, only having one hand, does that make it harder to do things? And he said, I don't know. I've always only had one hand. And he does flatbed. I mean, this guy, that's incredible. That's incredible. We, we love him. We really do. And we, you know, having a trust and mutual respect between a fleet manager and a driver, it, it's a critical piece of this pie. You know, if you can trust what your fleet manager is telling you, if you can trust that he's out there looking out for your interest and vice versa, you're doing the same thing. You're, you're doing all you can to take care of business. That is a huge plus. So I'd encourage you, you know, work with your fleet manager, get, get to know your fleet manager. Um, they're good people. And, you know, it just, it, it deserves that. So Gene, do you have anything you want to say to us? Well, uh, well I want to say to the, to the uh, new drivers, especially, in order to, to get to my level, of driving and safety, you always got to keep your distance between the vehicle in front of you. I see that every day, you know, the, 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 the driver, talking about professional driver, driving two feet from the bumper of the, the car in front of him. Keep your 300 feet and you'll never have any problem. Keep your distance and make sure you always know where your car, car's on the right, don't lose sight of the car's on the right side. In, Never look side what you got on that trailer because 
once you forget what you got on that trailer, it's going to turn you over. It's just, just this simple. In that, I do want to thank Eugene and thank Dan because I, I couldn't have done it without you. Yeah. You know, so. You know, so in case you, we haven't said it, I guess, he's getting his four million mile award here today. And along with that, you know, Robert gives Robert gives a check. I, I did a little math and uh, four million miles, you'd have to drive across the United States 1,600 times to hit that number. That's a lot. That's a lot. And, and, he, and it's just not like he's driving down the freeway. He's in traffic, he's making deliveries, he's doing all kinds of things, and he's accident-free for four million miles. So let's give one more hand. Hey, I'll turn it back over to you. Hold on, hold on one second. Yeah, I think Keith McCoy's got a question. Gene, can you tell us a little about your background, where you're from, and how you got to Prime, and your family, and that kind of stuff, please? Uh, I'm from Romania. I came uh, in the States in 1977, and uh, I, start, I started driving truck pretty much when I came. And then I took, all, I, I took some time off, and then in 1993, uh, uh, I came over to Prime, and here I am today. That's awesome. Congratulations, Eugene. Way to go. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Good job. Yep, no doubt. Another four million miler right there, Dennis. Can't get enough of them, man. It's awesome. What do you do? Wait on you. What do you want to do? Oh, I think we're rolling toward the end here. I think we are rolling toward. Let's bring up Keith McCoy, marketing department. Keith, come on up here. Good morning. The first morning. thing we got to say is, "Woo, pig, Suey, How about them hogs last oh, night?" Geez. Cut his mic. <laughs> took out a number one, took out my uh, eventual national champion, by the way. But that's okay, Keith. You can step on my... There are national champion wannabe. Yeah, now they are. No doubt. Nope. Okay. Good morning. Um, always a privilege to get up here and, and uh, see this group of people. I don't think we have taken the opportunity to recognize our new people yet. Dave. Oh, we haven't. Have we not? So if you're new to Prime this week, would you stand up, please, and be recognized? Thank you all so very much for joining us. Um, you're part of the family now, as Robert would say. So uh, as family members, uh, we expect you to, to uh, stay and enjoy the, 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 what we have to offer and contribute to the other members of the family and, and just uh, be a part of, of the group. It's really important for us to all be part of the family. You, your family, your wife, your children, it's all very important to us. We've got some awards here that we need to put up and show around this one, the big one. Uh, this is the TCA 21, 2021 Excellence Safety Award, third place for Prime Incorporated that you guys earned for your performance in the last year. So thank you very much. Um, I believe Carla and uh, Glenn have been a part of this. Um, I don't know, Bill, were you part of this or Jerome or some of the people? This is recognition for our participation in Wreaths Across America. If you have not heard of Wreaths Across America, I guess it'd be kept better off coming from you guys. You want to tell them what Wreaths Across America is? Uh, Wreaths Across America is, is to honor our veterans. Uh, it's usually the first week of December. Uh, where we go to Maine, we pick up Reese to place on every veteran's grave at the veteran cemeteries and stuff. And I think it was like 5 million Reese they placed last year in the United States, Guam, and a few other places overseas. Yeah. And there were 64 of us going to Arlington, 13 were in the convoy. There was mass, when we got there um, the year before, we just dropped off and had to go. They didn't do a convoy or anything because of COVID or whatever. Last year, we actually got to do the convoy and all the different places that we stopped. The most amazing things are is we still have little towns that pulled the kids out of school. They were lined up like four deep with flags waving, you know, hi, thank yous. And it was just, 
you can't describe how amazing it was. But uh, one of the things that they do is it's the it's teach, honor, and serve, and um, it it was just. And you just can't, you know, watching through the towns and and going through there, it's it just chokes you up. I mean, it was it was awesome. If you get a chance to run race across America in your state, whatever, jump on it. So so if these folks are interested in, in participating in race across America, how do they get there? Uh, talk to Jason Seymour. Jason Seymour, Jason Seymour, if you haven't met him and the Reef Division coordinates that, but tremendous um, respect for veterans, what they do every veterans grave in the US. But thank you all for your participation in that also. And we have one more, I believe. Yeah. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Actually, you got to talk about it. Well, this is the best fleets for to drive for if you um, this is the Hall of Fame, the Hall of Fame participation trophy. And I believe that Jim's back there somewhere. Just seven years in a row that we've been selected best fleet to drive for. Ten years in a row, uh, best fleet to drive for. And so they put us into the Hall of Fame category. Uh, and this is a recognition of uh, of you all and what you think about crime. So you are the ones that have uh, uh, done the recognition and, and have won that award. So there's another one for you guys too. So thank you very much for that also. And we are getting down toward the end. Um, I'm going to try and do a, a Robert Lowe imitation, which I, I do pretty poorly. Um, but the two things he talks about, uh, number one is respect. Uh, we owe everybody here respect um, for the job you do, for the sacrifices that you make, for what you do for, for your families, and what you do for me. I mean, I don't have a job except for you guys. And so thank you for that very much, and we owe you respect for that. Number two is we owe the opportunity to make a good living. So I hope that when you did your due diligence, you new folks, when you did your due diligence to come here, it was because we're going to provide you with the opportunity to make a good living and take care of your families like you want to. That's the two things. And then Bill's over here flagging. Um, so I will uh, talk about... Um, I don't know if you guys know Brad Kozlowski. He's a dra dra NASCAR driver. <clears throat> he drove for, uh, in the cup race, he drove for 10 years for Roger Penske, and then uh, this year decided to become an owner driver uh, with Roush Fenway. So anyway, they were doing an interview of why in the world would he decide to quit driving for Roger Penske, probably the most successful racing people ever, tremendous businessman to go to a different team. And he said, I've always had a dream of... Uh, of being an owner in the in the cup series and so the interviewer said weren't you scared of giving up a sure thing and going over to do this and he says if your dreams don't scare you you're probably not dreaming big enough and i think that really really struck me and so uh, a couple of days ago uh, jerome came upstairs to visit i hadn't seen him in a while uh, three and a half years ago jerome um had some health issues and was hospitalized in Southern California in intensive care. Uh, when he was uh, released from Southern California to come back to Missouri, he went back into the hospital here uh, in Springfield. So there was a, he was basically at death's door and not doing very well at all. In the process, lost his leg. Um, so he was uh, obviously not in a place to drive, but he had a dream too. And his dream was to get back behind the wheel. So he went from death's door to a wheelchair, to a prosthetic leg and a walker, to a cane with a prosthetic leg. And now he's on his own two feet. And this week he got his FMC and say clearance to go back to driving a truck. You're on the Thank you all very much. Appreciate everything you do. God bless you and be safe.